Until rather recently, I have been using these. This is a wise camera. From a hardware perspective, this thing is awesome, but from the software perspective, eh. For these things to store content, you either have to completely rely on the onboard SD card or the Wise Cloud subscription service. At $2 a month, that's not a bad price, but that is $2 a month forever as long as you plan on using these cameras. And personally, my main issue with these is there's not really a way to use these as IP cameras, at least any way that's currently being updated and supported. And because of that, I'm gonna be tossing out the Wise cameras and switching over to uh, these guys. These are indoor 1080p cameras, and they're basically function in all the, the exact same way as the rotating wise camera, except there is a key feature of this, and that is you can connect it either via Wi-Fi or internet. In the box here, of course, we have our manuals and guides, and then we can slide out the actual camera here. Overall, the form factor is really nice. You can see right there on the back of the internet, we have a, a micro, I think, micro USB, a button to go ahead and reset it, speaker, microphone, two-way audio, kind of important for my use case. There is a place to put a little uh, micro SD card, which is handy. And then of course in here, we have an internet cable if you do plan on using that. And then we have a mounting bracket. So overall, the hardware is pretty good. These things are relatively affordable, but there's a whole bunch of different IP cameras on the market that you could go ahead and grab. This is not what is super important. What's actually important is the software that I'm gonna be connecting all these cameras to, where I can then host all the media that they're gonna collect and use some features such as motion tracking and things like that. All of the features that I was getting with those wise cameras and so much more. And for that, I'm gonna be using hardware that I already have. This right here is my dashboard for Synology. Uh, initially, I did not even know that this application was in here until I clicked on this and started kind of checking everything out. This is Surveillance Station, and it is right here. An absolutely beautiful little dashboard, looks kind of like a desktop, where I can manage all my IP cameras, monitor them, check out all the various features and things like that. Now, of course, if you don't already have a Synology NAS, this might not be an option for you. Getting a Synology NAS to me is worth it. It's what I've been using for quite a while for much more than just this. Primarily, I use it for of course, general file station type storage. I have a virtual machine manager on here where I can connect to a, a VM remotely. And I have Docker up and running with a few different containers and services. But all that aside, let's go to surveillance station here. And if I go over to IP camera, you can see I already have everything basically set up. And it is important to note, this is not a, a free and open source solution. Uh, the all Synology machines come with two licenses. And if you get a third camera or any more cameras, you're gonna to have to get a license for it. Now I know one of my main points is I don't really want to be paying a, a subscription service for something. This isn't a subscription, it's a perpetual license that you can buy, which per camera seems to be right about 50 bucks or so. And you do kind of get what you pay for in the sense that this isn't just some open source solution. This is commercial grade software that you can use in your businesses, corporations, you can set up off-site cameras and connect everything in here. You'll see all that when I kind of dive through some of the settings. First, I'm gonna quickly walk through some older footage of me uh, setting up the third camera with the license. And now on this application, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. And you can see I already have two devices connected, patio and kids. This is gonna be our living room cam. So I just need to do add device. We're gonna add this via Wi-Fi and we're gonna do the Wi-Fi configuration setup as a new device. I'm gonna give it permission because that is going to allow us to scan the QR code. So that's the serial number. Now it's gonna admit like a sound to try to connect. So I'm gonna hit next. Here, we're gonna give it a name. So living room, it should be fine. And here I've noticed previously setting this up, trying to uh, set your credentials now, it's gonna give me issues. Right here, we're gonna put in our Wi-Fi password because it's gonna use that to connect. There we go, so let's go next. And now you can see that it has successfully connected so we can start the live view. And here is where I was talking about that it's going to want us to uh, actually change your password. Admin admin isn't really the uh, most secure setup. There we go, that should be relatively secure. So let's modify our password. Living room, channel one. Here we are. Here I am. Hi. So actually setting up cameras on this is pretty easy. Under the IP camera application, all we're gonna do is go ahead and click on add. And here it's gonna go ahead and search for cameras on our local network. It's pretty good about finding these. There are some situations you may have to manually input it, but the camera I want to add, I just go ahead and click on the check mark. 
Go next, and you can see here for this third camera, it's saying I do not have the uh, sufficient amount of licenses. So I'm going to go to the licenses application. You can see the default licenses here. I'm just gonna go up here, click add. It's gonna give me a software agreement that I'm going to agree to, and then go next. And then from here, I'm gonna input the license key that came on the little card I ordered, obviously blurring it out so you guys can't take it from me, and add it. From there, it's gonna go ahead and activate, and then we can see we successfully added the license. So I'm gonna go done. We can now see it there and we can see it is a lifetime license on our local host source. So from there, if we close this out, we should be able to click OK and then click next again with the license in there, it's gonna go ahead and allow us to proceed. We can see it pulled up the brand, the IP address, and what we're gonna do real quick is give it a camera name. For this example, this is my living room cam. It's going to go into our surveillance storage. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and authenticate it. This is where we're gonna type in our username and password for this specific camera. And we can see the status is a green check, so we are good to go. Now here is the setup. We have quick setup, complete setup, or you can copy settings from another camera. I recommend going with the complete setup because then you can actually change the uh, frame rates, days, things like that. On this example, I didn't change everything I should have. These cameras support up to 30 frames per second with a four megapixel resolution. So I actually went back and changed that later. But one of the main things I changed is the keep the files within the amount of days. As for me, 30 days of continuous footage will probably be a little bit too much for my 12 or so terabytes I have available in my NAS with everything else I already have in there. From there you can set the actual recording schedule. I'm just going to go continuous, but if you only want to record at night, things like that, that's where you go ahead and set it up. And then we have a summary of all of our settings. All we need to do from there is click done. It's going to go ahead and process that. And it may be disconnected at first, but you just go ahead and give it a second and then it will go ahead and connect. And here I am testing it out. And you can see here that that third camera is uh, disconnected at the moment. It's a little bit too far away. Uh, out of range when it comes to Wi-Fi. I got this guy right here. This is a uh, power line extender, which will run an internet connection through my actual <laughs> power outlets. So I'm excited to uh, check this out probably in a uh, upcoming video, do subscribe. But let's start overviewing some of these features here now that we have the uh, camera set up again. If we go over to IP camera here, this is where we can add, edit, delete, and kind of manipulate all of our cameras. We can filter by status so I can see what cameras are disconnected and what cameras are connected. I can enable disable cameras, but most importantly, if I go and view the kids room here, it will actually bring up the live preview of this camera and then we can actually kind of manipulate and mess with some of these features here. We have our volume, we have hold to talk, so you'll have that uh, two-way audio through here. This right here is that little uh, PTZ panel, which is just how we're gonna go ahead and actually move this camera around so you just click and move to use the pan functionalities of the camera we could take snapshots we could do a manual recording and then of course we can uh, drag and zoom here if i wanted to get a, a view of over here in particular and then we can kind of look around with some more detail and then of course this is being recorded here so i can kind of skip through and see older recordings there's really a uh, not much going on in here there's a little thing right here so yep there i am earlier i think i was uh what was I doing? I, was, I think I was grabbing this. I had this sit next to the camera. Close this out. And if we go to some of the other stuff, we have the monitor center. So this would be really cool to set up if you have like a actual room that you want a screen to go in and have all your cameras up in view. It's on a web browser, so you could probably even set this up on like a Raspberry Pi, just have open all the time. And if I go ahead and grab that kid's room, I can double click and it will put it right here. And of course I'll have access to all the various controls. If I add the living room, so you'll be able to see me, double click, you could see it popped it right here. And of course in this view, we can just hover over and actually, oh, I'm gonna mute this, getting some feedback, there we go. We can access all the features we have in the individual live view in this pane and you can add a lot more. If I go over here to general layout, you can see what you can really do with it. You can customize it really however you want. And then down here, everything's recording at the same time. So we have tracks kinda, and then we could go ahead and drag this playhead around and actually see what was going on at all cameras at a specific time. And then if I click this little live button, it jumps me back up to the now. So I'm gonna go ahead and save those changes, leave there. And then we have recording. So this is just access to all the actual files and various events that it went ahead and grabbed. If I go to storage here, you can see the actual volume one surveillance folder that I have added to store all this data. 
And I don't have the biggest NAS in the world, so I think I have it set up to three or four days to go in and keep this footage long enough that if I need to pull something from yesterday or whatever, it's gonna keep. Right here, C2 surveillance, this is their kind of cloud option. I'm not gonna personally use it, but if you did want to have a uh, both local and offsite backup, this might be a decent solution for you if you're running a business or something. Now this right here, maps, this is pretty cool. You could add image maps, which you could see I've done here, or you can add a map service for if you have a uh, surveillance stations in multiple locations. But here, for example, if I want to edit objects on this map, I could click, I could go kids room, and I'm not gonna put it in the actual, actually I'll do a, obviously the living room, boop, put this right here. You could adjust where the view is. So if something happened in a certain room and you have, like I said, businesses, or if you have a huge house, you would open this up and pinpoint that exact camera, change the actual field of view and see what is going on at that specific location. Close out, just another really cool feature. And then application center, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. You can see I'm really only running one thing, which is a, a smart time-lapse feature. Ooh, and it looks like I have an update, which is nice. But if I go under, let's do device integration, you could see some of the options I have. This one right here, I'm going to eventually set up. This is edge recording. So if a camera gets disconnected from the Synology station, it could actually rely on the uh, SD cards that are in here. So if a camera reconnects, it could kind of fill in the footage gaps during that disconnection with the onboard storage of the camera. So that is really nice. And you have other things like IP speakers, joysticks, things like that. And I'm pretty sure IP speaker is software that they use in like stores to play like music over the intercom, things like that. Retail, transactions, this is, I'm never ever gonna use this, but it's still a pretty cool feature to be able to integrate with a, a point of sale system or point of service system and actually see transactions like on screen or be able to search transactions and associate footage with it. And then over here under education, uh, live broadcast is something that's kind of cool. It uh, allows you to live stream various cameras to YouTube if that's something you're interested in. And there's really a lot more. We have access control, video analytics, large scale deployment, archive, live view, PC utilities and mobile applications, which by the way, I'm currently using a DS cam. I need to try out live cam but DS cam basically has all the functionality and features that I need, including everything that we've seen on here for moving the cameras around, talking or the two way audio, taking snapshots, things like that. And then down here under client, of course, this is our uh, Sur Synology surveillance client. So you could actually download a, a software version of that on your computer. But overall for it to be integrated within the Synology NAS like this, have this level of functionality and features, and the fact it's a one-time license fee is it's pretty nice to me. Now, I know there's gonna be comments down below talking about various free and open source solutions. I have a, a Proxmox container set up over here that I would love to go ahead and test some uh, other options out. So if you guys have various preferences for your home security system that I could go ahead and test out, please let me know down below. And in addition, of course, I'll have links down below to the uh, Synology NAS I'm using. Uh, the licenses if you're actually interested in that, as well as these cameras. The cameras are working really good. And of course the regular IP cameras. So even if you don't link them up in a Synology, you can link them up with whatever IP camera software you want to use. And uh, with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye.